Meet our mayor. Find out how to make your home more energy efficient. See how O'Fallon police are curbing aggressive driving. And get to know a St. Dominic teaching legend. Next on O'Fallon Matters. Welcome to O'Fallon Matters. After 14 years of public service, Bill Hennessy is starting his second term as mayor of the city of O'Fallon. We recently spoke with Mayor Hennessy about his view of the past and his vision for the future. I came from Indianapolis. Uh, my dad got transferred in 1974. I got married and moved to O'Fallon in 1981 and uh, been here ever since. I was a soccer coordinator up at Assumption, so to me that's a little politics there with running the soccer program. You do what's best for the majority of the kids. And when uh, the mayor at the time and Councilman, or uh, then Alderman Perkins, came to me and asked me, since they re did, redrew the, the districts, the wards, they didn't have anybody in Ward 4 and they had asked me to run and uh, I talked it over with my wife Debbie and in 1999 I ran for, for the Board of Aldermen and was elected and, and which was a good year because that's the year we opened City Hall. After four years, how does Mayor Hennessy see his first term and what event stands out the most? You know, it, it was all I expected. It was a great experience. Being 10 years on the on the council, I kind of knew what was going to be expected. It's a little bit more time than what I thought, but to me, that's part of the job. And you know, you do it here, you do it for the people. And you got to have your family support and your friends support to, to be able to do this. If it's you're asking what my proudest moment as mayor of the city of O'Fallon is, probably when we opened Brendan's Playground, uh, just to watch the massive people go in and play and watch the kids get off of swings and slides so other kids could, could do that, it was, it was heartwarming. When I ran for mayor in 2009, I wanted a playground like that here. I think we deserved one here. We have people coming out from all over the county, from all over the state to come visit Brendan's Playground. I've got comments that it's one of the best playgrounds in the state. There's no question in Mayor Hennessy's mind, what makes O'Fallon special? I think it's the residents and the businesses that we have here. Uh, the, the residents, the volunteers that come out and not only on our boards and commissions, but come out here for Garden Expo Day, for Founders Day, for Heritage and Freedom Fest. It's all our volunteers that help make our city what it is. And without our volunteers, I don't think O'Fallon would be what we are today. How does one balance the time demands of a family, a full-time job, and being mayor of an 80,000 resident city? I made it a point back in 1999 when I ran that Monday through Thursday I'll do stuff with the city. You know, whatever, if it's early in the morning, late at night, or whatever it is, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday I leave for my family. Now there are special occasions for Founders Day and Garden Expo Day and all that stuff that I, that I will come out and do, but 90% of the time, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is family time. Just what are Mayor Hennessy's priorities for his second term? to get a new justice center because we are outgrown City Hall and I know the police department and our court system needs a new place. To get Civic Hall completed, my hope is to connect Civic Hall with Alligators Creek and make it one complex thing where you know you can have wedding receptions there, you can have whatever you want to do there. So those two things is my biggest priorities right now. After 14 years in public service, Mayor Hennessy has a good idea about what it takes to be an elected official. Our job is not to run the city. I think our job as the mayor and the 10 councilmen is to give the direction to our city staff 
and let them carry out those wishes. I, I'm a service technician, been that for 35 years. I don't know anything about streets, I don't know anything about human resources or, you know, any of the departments, really. My big thing is, let's give the direction, this is where we want the city to go in the next one year, next five years, next 20 years, and have staff get, come back with the council and the elected officials and say, here's four or five different options. What do you think? You do it for the people. You, you do it for the right reasons. You don't do it for yourself. You do it for the better, the betterment of the community. As I said, I, for 14 years, I've been able to put my head down on my pillow at night knowing that I've made O'Fallon a better place and hopefully, you know, in the next one years, five years, 20 years, people look back and say, yeah, he did a great job. Aggressive drivers, beware. The O'Fallon Police Department is on a mission to curb aggressive driving throughout the city. <laughs> You may want to think twice before you drive aggressively in the city of O'Fallon. The O'Fallon Police Department's Traffic Division is focusing on curbing aggressive driving on all of the city's major roads. Right now we're doing an aggressive driving campaign to cover Highway K, probably from 70 to Highway 40, north and south. Accidents and citizen complaints compelled the police department to take action against aggressive drivers. In 2012, the O'Fallon Police Department wrote 1,542 crash reports, which involved 301 injuries. I mean, most of the most of the accidents are either fail to yield, you know, not paying attention, falling too close. I mean, we have quite a few of accidents where people just run in the back of each other, and most of us falling too close and not paying attention. So you may wonder what the O'Fallon PD considers aggressive driving. Number one, if don't follow too close, don't pass on the right, don't get in the center lane and drive down the center lane, pass up 10, 15 cars. You know, don't try to make that yellow light because by the time you make the yellow, they turn red and you end up somebody taking off as soon as the light turns green and you have accident right there in the middle of the intersection. I mean, don't get in a hurry. Take your time and keep a lookout. I mean, most of what we're writing is summons for those violations. You know, we're putting some spots where we work that we put signs out saying aggressive driving enforcement so people know we're giving you a warning and hey, we're out there looking. Next time you find yourself driving down the old Fallon roads, make sure you remember to follow all the rules of the road. You know, bottom line is take your time, don't be in a hurry. I mean, you got people, it's better to take your time and get home safely instead of being in a hurry and having an accident or running into somebody getting hurt. You know, relax and keep a lookout for people stopping in front of you. Basically, number one thing is a pet peeve, stay off your cell phone. Go handless, go court, I mean, go handless without holding on your head cell phone. Next is the story of a local high school teacher who has committed his professional career to the students and families of St. Dominic High School. Here's Joe Richter with more. Every person in our community should stand up and give applause to local educator Joe Hall. Joe has been a beacon of light at St. Dominic High School for 41 years. Over the years, he won a state cross country championship, served as the AD, he was a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he even won Teacher of the Year. But Joe's lasting legacy will be the thousands of O'Fallon lives that he humbly touched in his years of teaching and coaching. I've been called to do this. And I think that's the main reason why I can stay passionate and why I can continue to love it. Uh, God gave me some abilities uh, to deal with people and uh, I flat out enjoy high school kids. This guy taught a subject that's not easy to get through to high school students. Luckily for the students though, Joe has always kept his teaching approach fair and consistent. I teach math. Uh, my range of subject has varied. I teach anywhere from the uh, beginning kids, the pre-algebra kids as freshmen, and I taught the advanced uh, math class before we had calculus here. So I've gone through geometry and algebra and trigonometry. So uh, it's, been, it's been fun. The support that you get from the administration and the wonderful colleagues that I've had, had over the years has just been amazing and the kids that we have here are wonderful 
and the parents that we have really support their kids and really support education. And uh, I've, had a, I've had a blast for 41 years. Long after kids remember what the subject matter was that was taught, what they remember, hopefully, is the person who taught it. And I think for Joe, that's going to go on forever because he's such a man of integrity. He's a very humble man. Uh, he's a very faith-filled man. And so it's just interesting when you, you go out in the community and people will say, is Mr. Hogg still there? Uh, and he has been here for all these 41 years, so it's going to be a huge loss for us. But yet, you know, he's la he made such a lasting impression. Um, you know, and he's got his name on the track, too, so that helps, too. We won't forget him that way. But who he is as a person has meant more than how he taught as a teacher, and he's been a very good teacher, too. Joe coached hundreds of students over the years at St. Dominic. He has coached just about every sport that the school offers. From cross country to track to AD, Joe was always ready to step up to the plate when it came to athletics. I started here in 1972. We were going to restart the track program. Uh, it hadn't been in vogue for five years, so uh, we were going to start that. Uh, at the meetings, teachers' meetings at the beginning of the year, the athletic director came and said, let's start cross country. I uh, said, it doesn't make any sense, we're not prepared. But we started cross country that first year, and I've been coaching that for the full 41 years. That's been, uh, that's been a real treat. 2013 is the final year of his coaching and teaching career. So what's in Joe's future after retirement? My wife retired last year, and she, uh, she's spent the year enjoying it, so I might do that. Uh, there's, I've got some things in mind. Uh, I, I don't know exactly know where it's going to go, but I'm sure I'm going to miss my kids. Uh, I'm not going to miss having to come to school every day, I don't think. Uh, the first day of school next year, I'm going to just sit and smile and uh, not worry about that. But uh, I'll find something meaningful to do. It's kind of like when you think of a pebble going into the middle of a pond, the rings that come out from that. Well, if you think of Joe Hogg as that pebble, the amount of rings that are out in the world, about just they're better people because they got to be around him for a while. And I think that's one of his lasting legacies is the difference he's made in the lives of thousands of young people. I, I think it's been very good. I hope that for the kids that I've been involved with, the teachers that I've been involved with, the athletes that I've been involved with, I hope it's been as meaningful for them as it has been for me. Who knows what the future holds for Joe Hogg? What is certain, though, is that he has left St. Dominic High School with the teaching and coaching legacy that will never be forgotten. It's time for a break. When we come back, we'll give you a few tips to help enhance your home's energy efficiency. You'll also find out how the O'Fallon police are keeping up with their training in an expanding police environment. Stay with us for O'Fallon Matters. Celebrate our nation's birthday with the Metro Area's best free concert lineup featuring nationally recognized artists and bands. Wednesday, July 3rd is Country Music Night and up-and-coming singer-songwriter Josh Kelly kicks off the party. Ain't it funny how some things take you back? Steel Eye, Texas-born headliner Jack Ingram shows his passionate performing style to close out the night. On Thursday, July 4th, New Orleans party rock band Cowboy Mouth will demonstrate why they are one of the best live bands in the country. Festival headliners Spin Doctors continue the Independence Day revelry with their bluesy rock and roll. Country music stars Jack Ingram and Josh Kelly on July 3rd. Rockers, Spin Doctors, and Cowboy Mouth on the 4th. All free, only, at O'Fallon's Heritage and Freedom Fest.
Welcome back to O'Fallon Matters. O'Fallon residents will soon have another option for traveling throughout the region. The much anticipated Route 364 Page Avenue Phase 3 is underway. It's going to be a, a nice four lane divided highway um, uninterrupted by signals going all the way from 64 and now you'll have page extension that connects all the way into, uh, into I-270 in St. Louis County. And this is a great nine mile improvement that'll uh, pick up where, Mid -River, where the page extension left off at Mid River's Mall Drive and take it all the way to, to 64. From 64 you're going to have an a partial interchange at Hankey Road, interchange at Bryan Road, um, at K and, and, and at Mid Rivers, you know, um, at, at the Mid Rivers interchange where 94 kind of veers to the south, to the southwest, uh, that'll still be the same alignment for 94 and then the page extension will, will veer a little bit more northwest west or northwesterly at that point. MoDOT, St. Charles County, and local municipalities have teamed together to allocate $118.2 million towards building Route 364 page, Phase 3. The $118.2 million will be used for purchasing property, utility relocations, design, and construction. MoDOT used a design-build process to have contractor teams compete to win the contract. The contracting team is a kind of a joint venture of, of, of several entities, and it, com it comprises of uh, Fred Weber, uh, Millstone Bangert, uh, Cold Grading, and, and Parsons. And, and there's a lot of other uh, companies that are involved in this, uh, in, in this joint venture. Residents who are concerned about construction interfering with traffic can put their worries aside. There will be little, if any, interruptions. Through the construction process, there won't be a lot of uh, traffic diversion or, or impacts to traffic. So, you know, people who are driving on Route K or Bryan Road, or some of the other northwest or north-south um, routes that go through there, there's not going to be much impact. Um, really, really, we're, we're building this corridor through open land, um, so it's, it's going to be a lot of uninterrupted um, as far as traffic impacts go. Construction of the project is set to begin in May of this year and is scheduled to be finished in November 2014. There will be construction activity along all nine miles of the project until the new road opens. Completion of different sections will take place in 2014, starting with I-64 to Bryan Road, which will open the end of August, Bryan Road to Route K, which will open in early October, and Route K to Route 94, which will open the end of October. The entire project will be completed by late November 2014. Once the last phase is completed, it will be smooth sailing from there. It is a benefit for everybody because, you know, again, you're providing that, that connection now. Um, it'll help uh, commuter traffic in the morning, so it takes some traffic off of 64. It'll even take some traffic off of I-70. Um, it provides better connection for businesses, residents. Um, it's really a good, a great project for everyone. For more information on the project or to view maps, visit modot.org slash route 364 or call 1-88-ASK-MODOT. To sign up for email updates, contact Community Relations Coordinator Linda Wilson-Horn at lynda.wilsonhorn at modot.mo.gov. O'Fallon police officers conduct in-service training twice a year to keep up on the latest enforcement techniques. Joe Richter has the story. You'll be happy to know that O'Fallon's Police Department keeps their officers up to date on the latest law enforcement techniques. Year-round officer training helps to make O'Fallon one of the safest cities to live in in the United States. Work on the tourniquet is the actual stitching of this. Okay, go over another day. Our officers are required to uh, obtain so much training every three years. That's by state statute. So part of that training uh, is what we refer to as in-service training. That's what we do in-house here at the City of O'Fallon. And it's really something that takes place uh, across the nation. Each in-service training session features different training techniques that further enhance our officer skills. 
The focus this year has been on uh, ICS, that's Incident Command, that has to do with uh, federal requirements and how we respond to, uh, to certain catastrophes. Um, we're doing emergency operation on vehicles, vehicle driving basically. Uh, we're also, we, we, we have some emergency uh, uh, medical issues and, and how to deal with, with certain cuts and, and, and um, wounds of that sort and how to do emergency treatment. It will hurt when you sense this down. Special presenter David K. Tan, MD, helped teach officers operational first aid skills. Operational first aid training can mean the difference between life and death in emergency situations. I feel very uh, strongly that every law enforcement officer should have a knowledge of operational first aid because it actually makes our job in EMS a lot easier when they prolong someone's life long enough for us to come on scene, take over, and, 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 and bring them to the hospital. So it's really all a part of that chain of survival. And I think for too long, police officers have considered themselves outside of that Stop, medical please. chain of survival, when in fact, they are a key part of the medical chain of survival. And I'm glad that, that today's law enforcement officer understands that. Everything seems to be, to be evolving. Uh, it's getting a little more technical. Uh, but, in, but in the case of, of major wounds and, 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 and that sort of thing, it's really important that our officers have at least the basic equipment to stop this, uh, it, it, it's a matter of saving lives. Whereas before, it was it was it was just direct pressure. Now we, for just a few bucks per officer, we can have some actual equipment out there that uh, that we may be able to save save a subject or another police officer's life. Residents can rest easy knowing that O'Fallon police officers are well trained on the latest policing techniques. Stay tuned to future O'Fallon Matters episodes to find out more information on OPD training. Would you like to make your home more energy efficient? This next story has some useful information to help get you started. My mission is to make people aware of energy efficiency, why it's important, why you should do it to your home, you know, the little steps you can take. There's lots of problems that, that somebody can have with their home. Um, a lot of times they don't realize they're having problems. Uh, if you have a room that's cold, um, there's a reason why it's cold. Uh, if you have a room that's hot, there's a reason why it's hot. There are people that are trained in this area with the same certifications I have that will be able to diagnose homes and determine what the, the factors are that are causing these issues. There are many ways to make your home more energy efficient. The best place to start is by examining the attic for proper insulation. Look for in the attic. First thing you want to do is check and see what, see what kind of insulation you have up in the attic, whether it's fiberglass, uh, cellulose. Uh, look at the condition of the insulation in the attic to make sure that it hasn't gotten wet or have mold or any kind of rodent infestation. If that's the case, then we recommend removing it all. Um, we do air sealing in the attic with spray foam. We also seal the chases, any uh, soffits we seal and then add insulation to your existing insulation unless we remove it. Uh, recommend R60 insulation in the attic. We would recommend addressing the hatch, that's the uh, where you go up into the attic. Uh, insulating the hatch with a two-part tape on the uh, perimeter on the bottom side. Insulate it with two-inch rigid board on the back side uh, up to four inches. After properly insulating the attic, the next best place is in the basement. Cobwebs are a pretty good indication that you have an opening to the outside that needs to be sealed. To fix these areas, Jeff and his crew use a spray foam to seal and insulate these problem areas, which creates an excellent air barrier. In the basement, we'll check the band board, look for holes in the band board where the foundation and the wood meet, uh, where, pipes, where pipes go to the outdoors like AC lines, cable lines, and, and such. Uh, address the subfloors, that's where any plumbing stacks go up through the subfloor into the main part of the house, uh, air sealing around those. Any doors that lead to the outside, any windows that lead to the outside, we check those as well to check for drafts and see if they need to be caulked or weather stripped or have sweeps on them as well. 
There are many areas in the home where air can escape or enter into the home. Lights, windows, doors, light switches, and even fireplaces can be an issue. Jeff and his crew can easily find these problem areas through a blower door test, a diagnostic tool used to measure the airflow from a conditioned space to an unconditioned space by depressurizing, or in some cases, pressurizing the home. It simulates a 20 mile per hour wind that accentuates the air leaks. Every home is different. Uh, there are no two homes that are exactly alike as to, what to what's going to fix the house. Uh, everybody has different concerns and you know that are important to them. That's why it's important to hire a, a BPI certified uh, building analyst and envelope specialist. They know how to perform testing on the houses with the blower door and an infrared camera to determine the best, most cost effective uh, remediation. By making your home more energy efficient, you can help reduce your home's greenhouse gas emissions and save money too. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have a story idea, let us know. You can send us an email at O'FallonTV at O'Fallon.mo.us. Please remember to give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to all of us.